Welcome to this week's episode of Equip Tips. We're going to be talking about lenses. We're going to discuss some of the tips and techniques when purchasing lenses, what to look for, and we're going to discuss some of the differences between a kit lens and what we call in the industry as pro glass. Come join us. So generally we have all sorts of lenses. We have tilt shift lenses, we have artistic lenses such as lens babies which allow us to actually change the focal plane to give us some really neat images. And we also have prime lenses and zoom lenses or telephoto lenses. Basically today, just out of simplicity values, we're going to break lenses into two categories. Prime lenses and zoom lenses. Well, what's the difference? I get questions all the time about prime lenses. A prime lens is a lens that has a fixed focal length, meaning you can't zoom in or zoom out with it. It is set at a certain focal length, such as this one, such as the Nikon 50mm 1.8. Meaning, I, this scene is 50 millimeters, whether I like it or not. If I want to get zoom out of this, I, actually, I physically have to actually walk closer or further away from my subject. I don't have the luxury of being able to zoom in on the camera. The good things about prime lenses is one, they're usually about half the size, so the weight is a lot there, especially if you're that awesome soccer mom where you're trying to take pictures all day at, a, you know, at your kid's game. You might not have, have the luxury of wanting to haul around like a three or four pound lens. The other good thing about prime lenses is that usually, because they use less pieces of glass in them, meaning, or elements as we call them, they're able to have larger apertures, meaning we can go to uh, a wider hole of our aperture or our f-stop. Some of these lenses can even go down to a 1.2, and I just heard that they introduced something that's actually a 1, an f1.0. So the good thing about a telephoto lens is that I no longer have to waddle back and forth and get closer to my subject. I can stay in one spot. Say like I'm, I'm that dad shooting my kid's soccer game, and I, if I had a prime lens, I'm stuck with one focal length. If I wanted to get that nice close-up portrait, I'd have to physically walk out onto the field and probably get arrested so I could get that, that, that photo. Now if I have a telephoto lens, I can be up in the stands with a hot dog in one hand, my camera in the other, enjoying the game, and I can literally just zoom in and get the photo I want. Let's talk a little bit about the differences between, let's say, pro glass and the kit lens that comes with your camera. That kit lenses generally are made out of plastic parts, uh, they're not weather sealed, and they usually don't have special coatings, what we call meniscus coatings or emission dispersant glass, meaning you're not going to get quite as qu high quality of an image and you're going to tend to have more prone, you're going to be prone for more fringing, blurry corners and whatnot. Let's say our kit lens here, which is the 18-55 to millimeter lens, which comes with most Canon and Nikon DSLRs. The issue is with these is that they don't have a consistent aperture throughout the zoom range. Meaning, if I were to go from 18 millimeters and zoom into 55 millimeters, my aperture value is going to change. So at 18 millimeters, I'm at a 3.5. I zoom all the way into 55. I'm now at a 5.6. That's a significant drop in light versus with, let's say, a piece of pro glass, such as the Nikon 14 to 24 millimeter, I'm able to maintain a constant aperture of f2.8, whether I am at 14 millimeters or all the way zoomed into 24 millimeters. If we were to zoom in and our aperture value change, obviously now we have to make corresponding changes to our shutter speed and perhaps even our ISO. So having a lens, that can maintain a specific aperture throughout its entire zoom range is something that's going to bump up the price and put it into a pro lens category. Remember above all, even though we are all photo geeks here and I've got a one size too small lab coat on, it's you the photographer that takes the images and not the camera. With our advances in modern technology and the use of sophisticated elves that are in workshops, we now can go into some of the new things that lenses are offering, such as Nikon vibration reduction and Canon image stabilization. Other, other companies might call it optical stabilization. What this allows us to do is that when we are hand holding a camera, it actually has motors inside the lens that counteract our movements. So if we are zoomed in all the way, such as this lens, to 400 millimeters, it's going to be a really shaky shot. 
And as the light gets darker and we have to slow our shutter speed down, we can kick on the image stabilization or vibration reduction. And what that'll actually do is allow us to shoot in lower light, maybe one to two stops lower. And it will also allow us to get that steady shot. When do you want to use image stabilization or vibration reduction? Well, whenever you're shooting handheld and you need to get in at a, at a long focal length or you're shaky, it's a really good idea to have the VR or the IS on. Now, why don't we leave it on all the time? Because when we get locked down on a tripod, the camera's now not moving. We are at a fixed position. The plane's not going to change, the distance is not going to change, and in that situation, we don't want those servers, servos or motors inside the lens vibrating and trying to counteract movement because there isn't any. So in that type of situation, you want to make sure you turn your VR or your IS off. Considerations when looking for a lens is what are you going to be using it for? Do you want an all-around lens that's going to cover a, li a wide focal range such as you know, 18 millimeters to 200 millimeters, you know, so I can be really far away or get in really close. Am I looking to do portraits? Am I looking for a lens to where I'm up in a stadium on the 50th row, you know, with a nosebleed, and I'm wanting to get a picture of that, of that player's face. I'm gonna need a really, really nice telephoto or prime lens that's, you know, three or 400 millimeters. What I suggest is that before going out and buying a lens, there's many quality retailers out there and rental companies that will allow you to rent a lens for a very low cost. Can't afford this Nikon 14 to 24, or you know you don't want to anger your spouse by buying it without telling her. Go ahead and rent it. Go test it out. See if you like it or not. And if you like it, then you can buy it and ask for and then ask for forgiveness later, like I do. I get asked all the time, what lens should I use for this? What is the best lens? And the answer is there isn't one. Every lens has its pros and cons, and there really isn't one lens that can do the job. We all have our favorites. We all have what we like to use. And it simply comes down to your budget, your subject matter, and what, what you want. In the end, measure those three options and do what's best for you. Thanks for tuning in this week. I'm Big Ben with Equip Tips. See us next time as we dive into more of your questions. We share, we educate, and we inspire. Happy shooting.